In 2018, the global release of greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere added up to 36,570 million metric tons, measured as CO2 equivalent, and is still rising. This vast amount is hard to imagine. It is roughly equivalent to the mass of the current biggest and heaviest cruise liner in the world, the Symphony of the Seas, 161,101 times. In the European Union, 4,226 million metric tons of CO2 equivalent greenhouse gases were emitted in 2018. 79 million metric tons can be attributed to Austria. A trend of the recent years rather constant to marginally declining. Where do all these emissions come from? Most of the CO2 equivalent emissions are stemming from three sectors. Energy and industry, transport and buildings. For the Austrian emissions, the figures are as follows. 46% for energy and industry, 31% for transport, and 11% for buildings. Altogether, this amounts to almost 90% of the overall emissions. Specifically, emissions in the transport sector increased in the last decades. From a global point of view, the biggest source of greenhouse gas emissions is the combustion of fossil fuels. To mitigate climate change and consequently limit global warming to a minimum, a drastic reduction in global greenhouse gas emissions must be achieved. However, how can this be accomplished? Hydrogen can play a major role. When hydrogen is burned in a fuel cell, it is converted to electric energy and harmless water vapor. Additionally, hydrogen can be used to convert harmful CO2 emissions into renewable energy sources and raw materials. For example, with one kilogram of hydrogen, an average passenger car can drive a distance of roughly 100 kilometers. But where does hydrogen come from and how can it be produced? Hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe, where it is almost exclusively found in its gaseous form in stars or giant gas planets. On the Earth, most of the hydrogen is located in the crust, has a share of roughly 2.9% by mass and is mostly found in compounds. The most well-known compounds of hydrogen are water, H2O, methane, CH4, crude oil and other hydrocarbons. Furthermore, many minerals contain hydrogen. In 2018, the global production of hydrogen added up to 70 million metric tons. Most of the hydrogen is used in the chemical industry for the production of ammonia according to the Haber-Bosch process for the production of fertilizers. Another use is the hydro-treating in the petrochemical industry to remove sulfur from crude oil. The prediction of the global demand of hydrogen for the near future for all relevant sectors shows an almost tenfold increase until 2050. So how can gaseous hydrogen be produced? Presently, the most relevant technology for hydrogen production at industrial scale is steam methane reforming. In a multi-stage process, methane and water vapor are converted into hydrogen and CO2. As can be seen from the reaction equation, one mole of CO2 is formed for each mole of methane, CH4. However, one mole of CO2 is formed additionally. In other words, for each kilogram of hydrogen, almost 5.5 kilograms of CO2 are produced solely from the raw material. Taking into account the overall CO2 emissions of the hydrogen production by steam methane reforming results in around 12 kilograms of CO2 for each kilogram of hydrogen. Coming back to our example with the car. Using hydrogen produced by steam methane reforming, a smaller amount of CO2 is produced for a distance of 100 km when compared to conventional fossil fuels. Depending on the specific fuel consumption in the range of 14 to 20 kg of CO2. However, this is just a small improvement. There is an alternative technology for the production of hydrogen, water electrolysis. Here, water is split into its components, hydrogen and oxygen, in an electrolyzer using electric energy. As can be seen from the reaction equation, there is no emission of CO2. However, this process requires a relatively high amount of energy. Even with a high efficiency of around 80%, that means an energy requirement of roughly 180,000 kilojoules for each kilogram of hydrogen produced. Using the presently available electric energy mix in the European Union, that would add up to higher CO2 emissions compared to steam methane reforming. Hence, the electric energy for the electrolysis has to be generated from renewable energy sources, like hydropower, wind power, solar power or geothermal energy. 
Unfortunately, the high energy requirements for the further increasing demand of hydrogen will not be available from renewable sources in the near future, at least not to great extent. Therefore, we need a bridging technology that can deliver hydrogen at a low energy demand and a low carbon footprint. Okay, is such a technology available? Indeed, there is a possibility, methane pyrolysis. Here, methane, CH4, the main component of natural gas, is split into its components carbon and hydrogen. The specific energy requirement is around 45,000 kilojoules for one kilogram of hydrogen. Only one fourth compared to water electrolysis. Furthermore, as can be seen from the reaction equation, the carbon from methane is not converted to CO2 but instead to solid carbon. A team of researchers managed by the Montana Universität Leoben currently works on the further development of various methane pyrolysis technologies and thereby tries to enable the launch of this bridging technology at industrial scale in the near future. Different processes will be studied with regard to stability, scalability, quality of the hydrogen product, required resources and the type and quality of resulting carbon in particular. In order to generate an extensive dataset for future decision-making regarding the most promising technology route for the pyrolysis, a number of lab experiments with parameter studies will be performed. It is rather clear what hydrogen can be used for, but what can you do with carbon? Obviously, three kilograms of carbon are produced for each kilogram of hydrogen. Exactly. That is quite an amount to handle. In the end, it comes down to the structure of the carbon. It can substantially vary depending on pyrolysis technology and process parameters. For example, black carbon can form, which can be used for the production of tires. Another possibility is the formation of graphite, which can be used for the production of electrodes and batteries, or in refractories for high temperature applications. Furthermore, the formation of graphene, a two-dimensional carbon structure, is possible. It can, for example, be applied for supercapacitors in the electronics industry. Do these products allow for the overall utilization of the vast amounts of carbon produced? No, these applications cannot handle all that carbon. In fact, it will be necessary to valorize the carbon and deliver it to a useful application. Hence, not only a sustainable production without the generation of waste is guaranteed, but also a benefit will be generated by the carbon product. Therefore, additionally, the hydrogen production costs can be reduced. That makes sense, but which sustainable applications allow for the overall valorization of high quantities of carbon? This is another important part the researchers at the Montana Universität Leoben focus on. More specifically, they try to tinker the pyrolysis technology and parameters to result in a marketable mix of different carbon products. A possible future application is the storage of hydrogen in nanoporous functionalized carbon structures. An application for future mobility needs. Another big field of application is the construction industry. Here, carbon can for example be applied in the form of carbon fiber mats, replacing traditional steel reinforcement. It can therefore contribute to more sustainable construction, not only reducing the amount of concrete, but also making constructions more durable and additionally increase lifetime and or reduce maintenance. The biggest field of application is most likely agriculture. Even today, biojar is partly used there. It is a carbon product manufactured from biomass by pyrolysis. However, that product is only available at high cost presently. The structure of carbon from methane pyrolysis is similar to the structure of biochar. The high apparent porosity and inner surface area, a few hundred square meters per gram, can not only store water and nutrient efficiently, but also act as a favorable habitat for microorganisms. When applied in soil, the inoculated carbon can assist to store water and nutrient, thus making it readily available for the plants when needed. Therefore, plant growth can be promoted and generation of hummus is facilitated. Furthermore, the water absorption of the soils can be enhanced and thereby mitigate the risk of flooding in case of heavy rainfall. The application of carbon in agriculture and composting can also reduce nitrogen emissions and hence reduce their contribution to greenhouse gas emissions. In order to ensure an application of the carbon product from methane pyrolysis in vast amounts, the researchers try to find favorable process parameters that result in the production of carbon with proper product specifications similar to those of biochar. 
Thus, a comprehensive and sustainable valorization of the carbon product will be achieved. Let's summarize. Hydrogen will be an important material for future technologies and thus become a key element within the next years and decades. Hydrogen enables the coupling of the important sectors electricity, gas and heat and consequently enables the storage of renewable electric energy at a massive scale. Thus, it will be a valuable contribution for a climate neutral mobility and industrial production. Today, most of the hydrogen is produced by steam methane reforming with a remarkable amount of CO2 emissions. Water electrolysis can produce hydrogen climate neutral if the required electric energy can be supplied from renewable resources. However, the enormous energy requirement for future hydrogen production by electrolysis can only be provided as renewable energy to a little extent. Depending on the local electric energy mix, as a result, this hydrogen will also contribute to greenhouse gas emissions. An alternative process technology for the production of hydrogen is methane pyrolysis. Here a considerably lower specific energy is required. Pyrolysis can therefore be seen as a bridging technology to supply hydrogen within the next decades. The carbon from methane will not be released as CO2, but converted to solid carbon, another valuable product. Carbon has numerous applications. Energy storage for electrical energy or hydrogen, electrodes, in construction materials for sustainable structures and numerous applications in agriculture. Consequently, a reduction of the hydrogen production costs can be realized by the valorization of the carbon product. Many researchers around the globe work to further develop and realize methane pyrolysis at an industrial scale. The team led by the Montana Universität Leoben intends to implement technologies that guarantee a comprehensive, sustainable and valuable utilization of hydrogen and carbon. Besides the technical development of the process technology, economic and ecologic considerations for the methane pyrolysis are additionally in the center of interest. Furthermore, other processes for the production of hydrogen will be evaluated in a life cycle assessment in order to assist decision makers and guarantee the implementation of the right technology for the future demand of hydrogen with respect to regional and ecological requirements. Hydrogen and carbon are two essential resources for future climate neutral technologies. Their demand will rise strongly within the next decades. The project Sustainable Hydrogen and Carbon Supply and Energy Mining investigates and further develops methane pyrolysis for the production of hydrogen and carbon. It is financed by RAC Austria, First Alpine, Primatils Technologies Austria, Wien Energie and Montana Universität Leoben.